Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. The Hunger Games, Catching Fire, Movie Thoughts. Now, I should maybe start with the... Yeah, just some, some of the first, just... I suppose just, yeah, the, the PTSD of, of Katniss with, you know, she's shooting a turkey and then she sees the, the boy she killed to save, to, or save, to avenge rule, or I guess at the, at the time she was thinking, you know, it might save rule. It's, it's quite well done, it's, and it's so unexpected, it's, Th th those moments are very effective. Also, at the end when she gets raised up and they smash cut to her lying there. Very effective way of keeping this, you know, it, it feels like... It, 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 it's very first person perspective, which is exactly what the books also are. They're, they're entirely from Katniss's perspective no matter how much or how little she perceives of the situation. That's especially true of the passage where Joanna helps her and Katniss fears that Joanna betrayed her. And yeah, it, it works really well because really, you know, it's when, when she's getting lifted up and then suddenly she wakes up, that's basically, well, she wasn't, you know, conscious for that time. She, like, suddenly passed out while being raised up, and then hours later she wakes up at, at the table, and, you know, that's... So, yeah. Some of the changes from the source material... Now, I'm, I'm not gonna, you know, be one of these really annoying purists. I, I quite like the, the books, especially the second one. I'm, I'm listening to the audiobooks, as I watch the movies, you know, just before watching the movies, and I, yeah, definitely this one was better than the first one. I don't think that all the stuff that they cut was necessarily, you know, something that absolutely, desperately needed to be in the film, but I do think there are a few things. One of the bigger is that as the film plays, District 13 is only mentioned at the very start and at the very end of the film. Where in the book, I suppose, maybe a little bit before the middle, there is this section where Katniss runs into these two refugees, I think they're from District 8, who have dressed up as peacekeepers and they're on their way to District 13, and that's where Katniss really gets the idea that maybe District 13 is, you know, a real thing. That kind of sets that up, and they talk about how, oh, have you noticed how every time they show the film, it's, you know, it's the same Mockingjay, I think, on the, on the tape, so they only shot that footage once and once and they're showing the same footage so they're not going back to shoot new footage that means there's something there there's you know and also the reason they didn't destroy district 13 quite like they did the, the reason they didn't go after them quite as much is because they were developing nuclear power so they could really hit back against the capital if the capital go too much after them so that ignites this tiny little spark of hope for both the reader and Katniss that maybe District 13 is a future. And then that kind of gets left in the background for most of the rest of the book. And then 
then at the end we find out, oh, this show, this hovercraft thing is headed to District 13, and it's from District 13. So that really solidifies, oh, so what we heard earlier was actually correct. Where in this, really all we have is that at the start of the film, President Snow describes that, you know, we could destroy District 12 with, you know, nuclear and thousands would die just like 13, District 13, it was something like that at least. Either it was there or it was one of the other things, but right at the beginning, and just saying we destroyed District 13, you know, the capital destroyed District 13, then at the end, oh, we're headed to District 13, and Katniss doesn't even bat an eye. It's just, there's really some questions there, and frankly, there are enough twists to the ending, you know, Finnick really was in on the whole deal, Plutarch was a double agent, and, you know, District 12 is gone. I'd say that's plenty for the audience to handle without also having to, you know, deal with the idea that District 13 is now really, yeah, and, and with it just being this completely vague idea that, well, it exists, in the audience's mind, I really find is, is a disservice to the film. I, I would... I would have said that... I, I would say that should have cut some other stuff to make room for that scene where Katniss is with the other... you know, with, with the two refugees who are headed for District 13. I did also think that the, the scene with... In, in District 11. I'm pretty sure f that in the book, like, basically the family of Rue and Thresh were just down by the crowd. That there weren't these big screens. I get it's, it's to make it more visual for the film, but then the problem is when the old guy is standing down there, if, if he, you know, in, in the book, Katniss I believe she says, oh, maybe that's her grandfather, and then why wouldn't he be standing up with, like, the mother and, you know, the, the three younger brothers, so, yeah. But that was a, a really effective scene still, very upsetting, and, and to me it was mostly this thing of, you know, oh, Rue really meant a lot to Katniss. Of course, to Twitter, I fear that it will once again be set ablaze with horror at the fact that Ruth's family is black too. So, not looking forward to that. But yeah, it was it was really well acted. The 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 speech she gave and the the you know it was it was really solid. That, and, and to, you know, more on the speeches, while I'm not sure, you know, there, there's one bit where they're like just reading the, you know, like Hamish put it, reading the manual, reading the, the papers Effie got, they go, well, you try reading the stuff Effie gives us, just reading what Effie wrote for them, and, you know, someone in the crowd yells at them, why don't you tell us what you really think? I think I get... She, she basically means that literally. I've never heard that said literally. I've only heard that said sarcastically. Like when someone, you know, rants about something, <laughs> hello, they might get the response, why don't you tell us what you really think? But yeah, I did really like that <laughs> when Katniss is doing the whole spiel for the, the Capitol and Panem, she says, and I hope I'm quoting correctly here, Panem today, Panem tomorrow, Panem forever. I'm pretty sure that that's from one of Hitler's speeches, and it, it is delightfully nonsensical, where, where he said, of course, Germany today, Germany tomorrow, Germany forever, which literally, you know, just... You know, it sounds nice, but literally all he's saying is, you know, <laughs> we're here to stay. It, it doesn't really... It's, it's a slogan and not even a particularly good one at that. 
Now, the... I like how the, the alliance between Joanna and Katniss, or the, the entire alliance, but especially those two types together, is clearly a ticking time bomb. There is no way these two are going to be able to <laughs> tolerate each other in the long run. You know, the whole thing, very volatile. And I also found that Finnick was played just right with this. You, you didn't really know, you know, can, can, can we trust him? And, uh, you know, the, you know, when, when apparently Joanna has betrayed Katniss, you know, when she cuts the arm, it's slightly unclear in the film, but in the book, it's, you know, to remove the track. Oh, actually, wait, maybe there was a line about that in the final scene of the film. Anyway, yeah, it's, you know, to... So, so she thinks Joanna betrayed them, and if she did, then maybe Finnick did as well, because they were friends. So, she doesn't respond when Finnick yells, and suddenly she's, you know, pointing an arrow at him, and... You know, you you get this real sense, and again, I just listened to the audiobook, so I knew that he hadn't betrayed her, and I knew she wasn't going to shoot him, but I'm still sitting there thinking, oh man, can she really trust him, because there is still, you know, a little bit of a career thing going on there, a little bit of a, just, he, he's just there to sort <sighs> Yeah, you, you just, you don't know if you can trust him, really. It's, it's very well done. I am, I'm very impressed with the, the actor's work and, and the direction as well. Now, in, in general about the, the interactions, between, the lethal interactions between Katniss and Finnick when, when they first meet at, at the cornucopia. And you know, Katniss is all you know, bow ready. She's all like fatality, and and Finnick is all like friendship, friendship, and uh, yeah, that that worked pretty well. It's it's a uh, and and really, it, he Hamish just barely had time to get that to Finnick. Really, when you think about how you know he only gets it just just before they're going up to you know, ascend up to the arena. Now, when she is raised to, or right before she is raised to the arena, some peacekeepers come in, you know, t t taking over for the, you know, US police force when they, you know, when, when people need to be beaten down, and they beat the living crap out of Kravitz, and I personally do find that they're going a bit too far, but I can appreciate that someone had to put a stop to that man's acting. Now, I, I quite like the redesign, where it, basically in the first one their visors were like motorcycle helmet visors, and here it's very sinister, there's basically just this, this surface, maybe even a reflective surface, they have no faces. They, it really makes you think Stormtrooper, and I'm not just saying Star Wars, I'm also saying Hitler, you know. I am just, Godwin's lawing the heck out of this video, aren't I? It just, it has this real sense of just using force to get your way, and an oppressive regime. And like I alluded to in the in the review, I do think that when Romulus Thread arrives, I, do, I really like that, you know, he literally arrives and, and the former commander is like, welcome to and he gets black bagged, you know. And you know, yeah, what when after the whipping excuse me, after the whipping, he literally shouts, you know, clear the square! He just, he just asked for, you know, 
He just made a show in the square, and now he's saying, clear the square. You are all on curfew. Anyone caught outside during curfew will be shot on sight. And I just feel like, okay, you're just, you're taking it a little bit too far. Just maybe end it at just the curfew, or like, will be questioned if they're caught during curfew. I totally get what they're, it's, it's the freedom of assembly thing, you know, you cannot be out in public at night because we can't be watching all of you, we can't be sure that you're not plotting against us. It's a very anti-democratic thing to do, but it's just a bit far to go from, well, we have a black market and we're, we're okay, there are peacekeepers, but they're just kind of, you know, they look the other way, to, I will kill you if I see you out here in 10 minutes. It's just, it's a bit much. Now, the, I, I really like how they genuinely showed just the, the damage done to poor Gale's back. You know, I mean, it's, it's not quite as bad as it is in the book, but you do get to see the, the cuts and, you know, and, and Prim and Katniss go out to get snow for the, you know, that, that's when you know this is bad. This is not, you know, the, that's the kind of medical attention he can hope for there, you know. And, in fact, it's only because he, you know, it's only because Hamish intervened that, and, and PETA, that they had all got the, you know, got Gale back before the, the you know, you don't know how much longer he would have kept going with, with the lashes. Now, I do think that in some of the later scenes in the arena, it was difficult to tell apart the different members of our little alliance of necessity. It, it just, basically we have these, you know, let's see, we've got Wyrus, Katniss, and Joanna. Dark-haired women of, you know, slim build. And then we've got Peta and Fink, two guys with you know blondish hair. You know, on, only really Beatty stands out among those, and that's just a bit unfortunate when you know it's just before an action scene. You know, you really want to know who's in front when something suddenly attacks or the like. Also, really, the, the brutality of the, the acidic mist kind of thing, that was really effective. And seeing the result of the blood rain was really effective. And, and just the one line that Gina Malone has to deliver about the blood rain, that alone really tells you so much about the horror of you know, what, what they just endured. It's, again, the, the girl's got talent. Now, the, the revisit of the hope versus fear discussion, I thought was a little unnecessary and potentially goofy. It's, it just kind of seems like that's President Snow answer to everything. Well, hope. There, that was my trump. I, I, I do believe I just won the game. It, it just, yeah, it, it wasn't really necessary. I, overall, I think the, the larger role given to Plutarch, Heavensby, is, is fine once, you know, when you know, I mean, I knew going into it, and uh, I, I, was, I watched this with a friend who had not read the book. He pretty quickly figured out that Plutarch was, you know, and was, was going to be helping out with the... But, but yeah, you know, the things about... He's the one who says, no, destroy their black markets. You know, take away what little they do have. 
and you know, just, it's Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yes, it's cartoon villainy, but the man can make anything sound sinister and intimidating, and you just do not want to mess with the guy. It doesn't matter what he's saying. It doesn't... yeah, it's... it's... great acting. And he... you know, he, he kind of guides President Snow into some of the really bad decisions. He sort of, you know, decides that, oh, well, we can, you know, we can just get Peta and Katniss back into the games via the quarter quell. And, you know, so through that, you know, if Plutarch all this time has been working and he knew that Finnick would be in on it, Joanna would be, you know, would agree to it, and Pete and Katniss could at least be guided in the right direction, then that makes a lot of sense. And, and Beatty, of course, Beatty and Wyrus, that, you know, together really made a huge difference. And, yeah, and, and Plutarch made the, you know, it's it's a good kind of... When, when they take the black market away and they push down harder, in, in general, they're, they're pushing down harder on these districts. And what they expect to accomplish is to crush the opposition. But the problem is the spark is there. The rebellion is underway. And when they push harder, then the pushback will also be harder. And it's of course in part limited what just mere men can do, but it's they're they're not going to force them to into submission. They they will keep fighting and you know and those that die will become martyrs for the cause. So the the idea that Plutarch is the one who helps guide it in that direction makes sense. He he knows that that will be you know effective in that, and it also kind of you know with him being a double agent, and you know it's also a way for him to win some points with President Snow, and at the same time with him being a double agent, it's it's part of that unfortunate. You sometimes do have to take some really horrible things with, uh, you know, for, for the greater good. And he knows that when he says that to President Snow, a lot of people are going to be very hurt by it. And it just, it's a, it's a horrible decision to have to make. But it's necessary for it to be done. So it it's a good, effective way to also give some 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 personal gravitas to that. Where, if I recall, in the in the novel, it's not really attributed to anyone in particular. Again, you know, novels in first person, so. Katniss doesn't know who's doing it, and to make it be Plutarch is, yeah, it, it gives it some further significance there. It, it helps flesh out this character who we don't really get to know very much in this film, nor in the book for that matter, so that's, that, that's a, a good idea, and again, just, you know, a lot of this is stuff that is just described in the book, and when it's a movie, you re we really do need more than just, you know, things happening or things described. You know, similarly, a lot of the monologues are turned into dialogue. Now, the... I'm really glad that Joanna's <laughs> strip made it into the film, and I think it's much funnier and just a really great moment in the film than, than even in the book. I, I really liked it in the book because it is just, just 
Yeah, right there. That's who she is. That's Joanna Mason. She doesn't care. She just... Nope. And, and I love the bit where they, they use the, the limited swearing of a, of a PG-13 movie and the fact that this is being aired on TV to, to bleep her swears because she probably would swear, yeah, you know. I just think this is beeped up and, you know, just, yeah, that, that whole, that is, and, and, and Caesar, you know, well, that's, that's one lady's opinion. He's, he's fantastic, it's the whole thing, and, and when, when BD is like, well, if, if man's laws created the quell, then man's laws should be able to undo it as well, and, and Caesar's like, interesting concept, it's just, it's just, I don't know what to say to that, it's, yeah, Tucci is fantastic in the role. And the, but, but yeah, jo Joanna Mason is just the, you know, she steps into the, the elevator and she, you know, she, yeah, she says, you know, so what's it like to be, you know, the one everybody wants to sleep with? And Katniss starts, I don't think everybody, I wasn't talking to you. And, you know, and, and Katniss is like, okay, and, and, you know, Peter, zip me down, will you? <laughs> and Katniss, again, just, her face is just hysterical, and, and, you know, okay, so zips down, and then she turns around to face them, and rip off with the, the and Katniss is, like, turning her face away, like, what is going on here? And and Peter and Hamish and and down with that and oh there are those the pants too. And you know, there at the end, you know, she's like, thank you. And Hamish is like, no, thank you. <laughs> that was so much fun. And just everybody in my theater just Yeah. Went nuts over it was just it was so much fun, and and the just in general the humor when when Peter wakes or when Peter's resuscitated from the you know by by Finnick, which I think about a third of the audience loved that moment, and a th another third of the audience didn't know quite what to make of that moment. But yeah, when when Finnick is done resuscitating, and and Peter is like. There's a force field over there. That's that's funny, and that's a really great way to relieve some of the tension from this really scary moment that we've just witnessed. And yeah, it, that was really great. I like the way this builds on the Mockingjay symbol. With you know, in the first it was a pin, and now it's a suit of hers. And there's you know the the graffiti tag on the, you know, right inside the tunnel and this whole thing, it's, yeah, it's, it's quite nicely done and, and the, the suit looks fantastic. The, the wings on that thing and, and just, you know, and, and you see Sinna's face and you see President Snow and it's just, ah, oh, that, yeah. I'm pretty sure that President Snow's granddaughter wasn't the the little girl who said to Katniss, you know, when I grow up, I want to, you know, I'm going to volunteer just like you did. But anyway, segue over. I really thought that was a great little bit to use for a nightmare. Again, this bit where, you know, you're just seeing, you know, a montage of things they say at the various speeches, and suddenly you're seeing a little bit of a nightmare, and it just is such a horrifying thing. It's, it's this tiny little glimpse inside a, a hurt psyche, the, the thought that her celebrity will lead others to do the same, 
and and it's sort of it's it's that thing of she's struggling with should she become a figurehead a a symbol for this movement for the rebellion or you know can she can she take on that responsibility and and just yeah the the idea that something you did to save someone has you know, will 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 go on to destroy other people's lives. That's a horrible thing to to have nightmares about. So, yeah. Now the um, I felt that this, like the first, went into nicely, with without being too on the nose about it. If this one was a bit more overt about it, but the the thing about how Rue is kind of the surrogate baby sister of Katniss. She is used to taking care of, you know, a small 12-year-old, you know, shy little girl, singing to her, taking care of her, making sure she's safe, even from, you know, dangerous outside forces and such. I, yeah, that, that worked quite well. Also about Rue, I like that they didn't maintain that PETA painted on the floor and you know of course we get to see what he painted we don't we aren't just told like in the novel again visual film film visual medium but it does come kind of out of nowhere when it's the only time that PETA painting is ever brought up they they sort of start on it when they get into the the color discussion there but then it doesn't go into him showing paintings or anything. If, if they had just had a little line or something about, you know, before or after that he paints things, but yeah. Now, the... I noticed uh, several reviewers saying that you know, that this was the the best franchise currently in you know, in development. I can certainly understand why. It's yeah, I, I cannot wait for the third one. And excuse me, it's yeah, it's just it's tremendously captivating and it is so very relevant today, and I, I realize that the books aren't that old, so that in part makes sense, but just this this vision of a reality television controlled populace fighting each other for scraps from the, the table of the rich to, to keep them from actually fighting the rich, you know, the, the little bit of hope that they can get out of it. Let's call it the American Dream. It's just, it's, it's a very strong satire and, and yes, very, very relevant. So I'm, I'm really happy to see that these books were picked up for adaptation and that it's coming along so well. I'm really happy to see that Francis Lawrence will be directing both parts of Mockingjay as well. That is is very promising. I have no problem with... I'm not even going to try because I don't remember the doc, the guy's name. But, yeah, the, the guy who did the first one, I think he did quite well. I just... Overall, I do think that this is a better a better film in several ways and definitely the right way to go overall. Now, the... I like the... I, th I the, the whole idea of the arena here with it, you know, the, the clock face and then how personalized and lethal it is. The the, the Jabber Jays that repeat the tortured screams 
of whoever of the loved ones of whoever is near. At first it's Katniss because she's like leading the group. And then Finnick runs after her. And when he arrives near her, he hears the screams of Annie, whose last name skips me at the moment, but yeah, it's it's a really it's just it's it's very very effective and, and the various you know the, the the mist and the tsunami and the, the lightning in the tree all of very effective very very tense and and just the bit where Katniss is pressed against the or you know yeah when when she can't get past the barrier and the, the birds are just right there screaming and, and she, again, it smash cuts, and then she's there, and, and they're saying, Katniss, you're okay, it's okay, they're gone, you're okay. And, and you can just tell the torment she had to suffer through. It was fantastic. The, the sound design, and the, the, the cutting, the way it, it held on it just the right amount of time. It did not stay on it for too long. We did not have to listen to it for too long. You know, it's it's very... It's a fine balance there between making clear that this is torment and not actually tormenting the audience because, you know, you don't want to go into Michael Bay territory now. It... And, and it just... It walked it so well. I am just... You know, you you just know that Katniss after that is just devastated, and and the final shot with the camera just holding on her, just the reaction to her finding out about District Twelve having been destroyed. Just the the it's it's a close shot, no cutting, it stays on her, and and just she has to act and and knowing that that will be the last thing the audience sees before the beautifully animated you know mocking jay with the with the fire logo around it just i just fantastic work i i cannot give jennifer lawrence enough praise for for her performance in this film now I I like the way the this whole thing of the the tributes working together. You know, they they join hands, and you know, all of them speak out against these fights. You know, I mean, the the two careers, you know, Gloss and Cashmere, are like, you know, well, it's gonna be hard to watch. You know, we've been here for so long. It's just the yeah. It's it's such. You know, it, you just, everyone is just devastated by this, and, and then when, when, when Peter makes up the, you know, when, when he says, actually, we already got married, and uh, we just, you know, wanted to, you know, we, we got married in secret, and, and the, the way he delivered the, the, the bit about if it wasn't for, if it wasn't for the baby, it was just, fantastic. It just the way they held on that just a little bit longer and the the reactions from the audience, from the capital audience, was just devastating. And finally you see Flickerman just, you know or actually I guess that's when they when when they all stand holding hands, you know, Caesar's just like cut cut the cut the feed and you know, it, 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 we see that it got to them. They finally, the, you know, Flickerman breaks character and they have to actually disrupt the feed, which in itself sends a signal to the, to the districts. That right there says something just happened that wasn't supposed to happen, that we were not supposed to see. And yeah, it's, it's really, effectively done. And this, 
you know, and then once they get into the arena, that several of them work together, and that's the way that they can have a chance against the 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 capital. Now, again, I have not, you know, I yeah, I haven't read or listened to the the third book yet, so I don't know exactly how it goes. But they do, they get out of the arena because Joanna saved and you know kept alive Wyrus and Beedy who both were integral to making, you know, yeah, to, to breaking out of the dome. And Katniss fires the arrow, you know, Joanna saves Katniss from Brutus and Inabaria. The teeth, beautiful work. She looked so freaking intimidating. I, yeah, that just... Yeah, I... <laughs> well done. And... Yeah, just, just the whole way this worked together to, you know, bring... And, and the way that, you know, it ends with, I think, you know, Baria was among... Maybe Brutus too, but definitely Peter, Peter and Joanna were picked up by the capital. And you know that they're gonna have to get Peter back. Katniss is really, you know, she, she, she's going to want him back, you know, as, as inspiration as for, for making speeches to the crowds and just, yeah, she, you know, he, he has done a lot for her, meant a lot for her, and, and means a lot for her, and Joanna, you know, probably will be coming back as well, but the that again brings up, you know, I, I look forward to finding out what goes on with the, what, what, I hope that that dynamic will be explored again, you know, Joanna and Katniss in, in this kind of uneasy alliance where, you know, because it's just their two personalities just, it's like oil and water. With, with a match thrown in for good measure, it just does not quite go well, yeah. Now... Let's see, that might more or less cover it. You know, when, when it appears that Katniss is married and pregnant and will still have to fight to the death. You know, I'm pretty sure that's what pro-lifers think that we pro-choicers actually want for women. But that, that is a very effective, that's kind of taking it to the next level, you know, once they are once they're detached enough that the idea of 12 to 18 year olds killing each other for sport, once that is no longer beyond what you will tolerate, then throw in that, you know, one of them is going to be a mother, that she, you know, that, that you're not only killing someone young, but you're actually, you know, destroying a future life. It, it really highlights the fact that you're taking so much away from that. I mean, one thing is, you know, a, to, to outright, you know, take the, the, yeah, it's, it's the entire future of these of these people and, you know, everything that entails, including children. And in this case, one, you know, right there in the, in the womb. Actually, maybe that's it. Maybe the crowd is full of pro-lifers. Anyway, I thought Mags was perfectly done. I was a little concerned that the, this, 
you know, frail old lady who couldn't really talk in a way that people understood was going to come off silly and take away from the overall. I thought she did fantastic and they, they did it really well. I like how the monkey attack allowed for a bit of a showcase of the different talents, uh, weapon related talents of the of, of the various, I guess, victors. And yeah, you know, you got Katniss with the bow and arrow, who we already see some, you know, we get to see Finnick with that badass trident. The, you know, the bit where he's literally just swinging it between his arms, standing by the beach in front of the water, I'm pretty sure he's just temporarily confused, thinking he's Poseidon, wondering why the ocean isn't doing his evil bidding, but yeah. We get to see Joanna with that axe. Uh, man, I, Gina Malone can axe me out any time. That was terrible. I apologize from the bottom of my heart. And PETA with the machete. It, great way to, because when it's animals, you can have them just kill one by one. It's, it's very clear that these are not gonna stop until they, you know, until enough of them are dead or the like. Whereas if they were really killing some of the other tributes, that might be a bit more questionable. And so, yeah. So I'm really glad that they went in that direction for that. That might more or less. Yeah, I think that was everything that I wanted to say. Yes. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.